there's Mark. Mark is here. Yay. Yay. All right, Mark. Awesome. Okay. So we were just talking about, um, and I don't know if you saw this, Mark. Um, I'm giving away an award in November in Hollywood um, called the Music Hustler Award. So we were just talking about Oh, wow. It. So, yeah. So, all right, everybody. So I'm excited. Let me, um, let me get my, um, let me get my screen set up. Let me see how I can get this with just me and Mark on your spotlight video. Boom. There we go. There you are. And then I think, wait, in video. How do I, oops. Okay, there we go. Okay, let me see if I can, let me admit the rest of the people coming in. All right. Great. All right, everybody. Let me, uh, turn this on to, I'm going to mute everyone and then I'm going to unmute you, Mark. Okay. So I asked to unmute you. I think you have to accept it. Let me, ex I'll, I'm accepting. I've accepted. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me, um, I think it's on. Make sure this is working correctly. Okay. Spotlight video. Okay, great. All right, awesome. All right, welcome to Music Hustler Live, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have Mark here. Mark, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Mark is super awesome. I have known him for a few years now. I think it it may have even been like 10 years. I, now. Maybe 10 years, yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking a few. Yeah, a few years. A few, now, a few 10, yeah. Uh, Mark is just exceptional. He's just, um, you know, been rocking and rolling ever since um, even with the pandemic, as soon as we came out of the pandemic, he, we talked and he's like, yeah, I made like 13K in May. And I'm like, you are awesome. I have to interview you um, because Mark has just always just had this really great attitude about everything. And he um, is not only a songwriter, producer, a writer, um, but performs cover songs. And that's been a subject of some of the things we've been talking about. So um, Mark, I'm going to put the spotlight on you here really quick. And if you want to just introduce yourself and tell people a little bit about yourself and then me and Mark are going to chat and then we're going to open up for um, a live Q&A so you guys can ask any questions that you want. And feel free to put any questions in the chat box too and I'll moderate. All right. Um, well, first off, um, thanks so much for having me come and, and hang out and chat. and. I love I love the uh, you know uh, what is it the it's the hustlers music hustler live music hustler I mean when you say that I go that that pretty much sums it up for me I mean uh, like you know my background is uh, you know I I uh, my dad bought a piano and brought it home when I was maybe six or seven years old and I and I sat down and somebody played heart and soul and I thought that that was the most amazing thing I'd ever heard and I asked him to show me how to play it and within about you know within about one second I realized this is what I wanted to do in my life and uh, and uh, you, you know I think I was even you know there was some some song on the radio and I was playing a few notes along with the piano and I was oh I was like oh man I got this <laughs> but and that's what I wanted to do, but, um, you know, and then I had this whole, um, I mean, I don't know how you guys are, but for me, it was almost like this idea that, you know, being a musician was going to, you know, even though that's all I wanted to do, you were, you know, I was going to be a loser and I was going to have a terrible life and probably live in somebody's basement or something like that, you know, or in the back seat of their car or, you know, something like that, because, uh, you know, uh, you know, musicians just... Musician is just a terrible job to have, but uh, you know. Then I, uh, you know, I. But I, I got inspired by people that I. I got inspired by some people that I knew, and uh, that I could see that they were making a couple hundred dollars a week. You know, just playing in play, or a couple hundred dollars a night, sometimes playing in, in a club. And I thought, you know, if I could do that seven nights a week, you know, fourteen hundred bucks a, a week would be okay. You know, that would be all right. And I, uh, you know, so uh, anyway, lot, lots and lots of people have inspired me, but that's kind of like the, the, the super short story on it. But I just, um, I found that, you know, uh, 
that I could I could make a great living and actually it's almost funny to me I don't you know I I don't even necessarily consider that I'm making a great living playing music right now but I'm you know um, I mean I made a hundred and fourteen thousand dollars in 2019 uh, playing gigs and and when not just playing gigs I anyway I can get into like how I do it because I'm like I do all kinds of things musically t to make income but I it's a but I, I will say it's fun and it's one of those things like every day uh, I am very grateful that I that I can do what I do for a living and it, it's absolutely amazing and I, I definitely think the sky is the limit like I could I'm definitely in my, my mindset is you know how can I 10 10 X what I'm doing you know that sort of thing so yeah, anyway. how did you because um, we were talking about it earlier how we were saying that you know we both didn't even know you could make money in music like I thought you were either broke or you were famous you know, I didn't think that there was an in between, and I even thought if you were famous, you were still broke. I thought it was all like, a <laughs> yeah. I just thought no matter. What, I just thought they were like rent, you know, borrowing their friends' cars or whatever. You know, I just was like, they're all broke. Everybody's broke. There's no way to make money in music. But I was still like, but I still want to do it because I love it. You know what was like? What was it that made you? I mean, you said that you knew some people. What was it that went? Hey, I think I can. I think I can do this. I guess you know my uh, you know that's that's interesting because I get I decided at some point that I didn't necessarily I mean I didn't necessarily think I was gonna be you know Elton John although you know I wouldn't you know I certainly if he you know needed somebody to replace him I would apply or something like that but I you know but I um, I just decided that uh, that okay I, I had a friend, I was living in Boston, and I had a friend that would go out and play at this, he was a, he was playing uh, in this place called Lily's, and it's in, in the Faneuil Market in, uh, in, in Boston, and he would go down and play Lily's this many years ago, he'd make like 75 bucks to go out and play, but he would make like 100 bucks in tips or something like that. And you know, I just kind of looked at it and I went, you know, um, I mean, he was probably the first guy where I went, you, you know, wow, that's, uh, you know, because I don't know, like, whatever I was doing, I wasn't making $175, you know. I, I mean, $175 sounded like, wow, that's that's great money, you know. So um, so I uh, I figured that minimally I could go and make, if I made 100 I think I, my initial thing was if I made $150 a night, I think I'd make $1,000 a week. And I went, you know. 50, 50 K a year, uh, you, you know, 50 K a year would be okay with me, you know? And, uh, anyway, <clears throat> then I also, I read another, uh, I read another book by this chick named Lisa Stansfield and she was all about how you could, she was a, a singer songwriter and she actually made CDs and started selling CDs at gigs. And she, uh, you know, and she just, she was a songwriter trying to make it as a songwriter, wasn't making steady income, but she just, she just figured out, she went to a party and sold a bunch of CDs and went, wow, this is crazy. I made $200, you know, at a party. And, I, and uh, so then she just started doing it full time. And, and she said that it took her three years to get up to where she was making $35,000, uh, $35,000 in a year. And... And you know that seemed like that seemed legitimate. And one thing that's funny to me is that one thing that's funny to me is that you know, like the if you Google it, what does the average musician make? And I think it's something like thirty thousand dollars a year. And per personally, I'm not sure that I could live on thirty thousand dollars. I mean, I'm, I I probably could live on that, but I don't think I would be happy living on thirty thousand dollars a year. Um, uh, and but I think uh, you know, but it's amazing that you could make that much and make that steadily and then from what I found is like you know I don't think there's any limit to it now I think um, you know I'm just into I've got a you know like a you maybe a system or something I've got a uh, you know something that's working and I'm just going with it and I, I mean, what did you do first I mean did you like say okay I want to do this so did you learn all your songs first I mean how did you how did you like what was this like if you were to give me like you're the five steps or the three steps that you well I'll tell you I'll give you one thing not to do like I mean I had I remember I went and uh, 
I went in this club one time and I saw this guy playing the piano and I walked over to him and I said, how do I book this gig? And he goes, first thing he said to me is, well, do you, can you play four hours of music straight with no, with no music? And I went, oh, no, I don't think I could do four hours. And he said, well, then, you know, come back and talk to me when you have four hours of music. And, and you know, here's one thing I would suggest on things like that, to just ignore that, because that's complete hog. It's complete not true. <laughs> um, because what I found is that, uh, okay, um, okay, you, it, here's, you want the, the funny, this is the, the amazing, so I, I, I would play in bands and I was, I played with a lot of different groups and I was trying to find any kind of gig that I could and I would, you know, I uh, was doing, playing background for this, the singer hired me and I did a bunch of charts for her or whatever, but I, I wanted to do something myself. So, um, okay, I got this call, a friend of mine was a bass player, work, I was living in Hawaii, a friend of mine was a bass player, and he said to me, hey, you should call this agent. Um, uh, her, her name's Billy Ann, and you should call Billy Ann. She's got this gig. You know, you can make $50 a night. This was many years ago. But he, he said, you can make $50 a night. And uh, so I called Billy Ann, and I said, uh, hey, I want to do, do the gigs. So turns out they're a five-hour gig. You know, you're playing from 9 to 2. And uh, I was in a pizza place and I went great and she goes okay so I said good I'll you know I'll be there Friday night or whatever or maybe it was Friday or Saturday when I booked it so I'm like you know whoa I got a gig and then she goes no what are you going to and, I, and I'm not lying she says what are you going to uh, do you have an amp that you can sing through and I was like oh oh I was like oh you have to sing I because I don't sing and um, and so I said, oh, I'm, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't sing. So she said, okay, so I need a singer. And I'm like, okay. So I went and talked to my friend Miles that uh, had, had told me about the gig. And, I, and he goes, did you get the gig, man? And I was like, um, no, I didn't get it because they want a singer. And he goes, he goes, you know, you have a, I like the sound of your voice. And he goes, you can, you can sing. And I was like, um, I mean, I don't know, man. He, he goes, no, I mean, I, I think, you know, you have a nice voice, and I bet you can sing. Can't you? And I got to, well, you know, I could probably sing some. He goes, and he goes, well, what, song, what songs do you know? And I go, well, um, he goes, wait, he goes, I go, I know Yesterday by the Beatles. And he goes, how about Happy Birthday? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I could do Happy Birthday. And he goes, I kid you not, he goes, dude, that's half a set. <laughs> call her back tell her that you sing and I was like and I looked at him and I was like all right, Miles are you out of your mind are you serious and he goes and he's like yeah I'm serious call her back tell her you sing so I called Billy Ann back and I said Billy Ann you know I can't sing I can't sing the whole night but I can sing some of the night and she goes okay great you're booked and I mean, I literally was freaking out because I did not have any repertoire. I mean, I had, you know, I mean, so what I did was I wrote down every song that I thought I could sing. And I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm coming up with stuff like, you know, I mean, when I heard Harry Belafonte records or whatever, when I was a kid, you know, down in Jamaica, da, 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 da. you know, I can get the words. I had a notebook. I wrote all the words in the notebook. You know, this is, you can tell this is like, you know, a few years ago, but this was, you know, now I have an iPad that has a, you know, you can get any song on ultimate guitar tabs in 10 seconds, you know, so, but I, I literally um, went and did that gig. It was a five-hour gig. I, I had, you know, 40 minutes of singing the first night. But, w but I ended up doing that gig, and I did that gig for, I don't know, a year or two. But after three or four months, I, had, I could sing for 10 hours. I, I had repertoire. And, and honestly, the way I feel about it, the first thing you need is a gig. Like, I mean, it drives me crazy when people, get, when people say... Hey, um, we should get together and you know practice a lot of songs. And I'm kind of like, first off, you don't even know what songs you need to learn because you don't know what the gig is. So you first thing you need to do is book a gig, and and that and it 
it sounds scary and it probably is a little scary but I mean I kind of go I don't know too many things in life that aren't scary you know you got if you got you know if you're getting married or something like that man if you're not scared about that I don't know you know you know you know but I you know like anything getting in a car you're gonna drive a car you're gonna be scared you know I mean it, it doesn't matter uh, first time you turn on a vacuum cleaner probably scares the, the crap out of you <laughs> I don't know whatever but anyway so that's that's how I got that's how I got up and running and and you know from that gig I um, from that gig I uh, you know started like other people would I would walk around to other places I was living in Hawaii there's a ton of gigs in Hawaii and I, you could walk around Waikiki and I would just walk into any place with a piano and I would just sit down and and I'd say oh you know I had this whole like little thing oh wow you have, you guys have a piano could I play it just to check it out you know and then they they'd sure you know I'm a pro I'd sit down I'd play the person would come walking over to me and go wow um you know where are you playing you know are you where else are you playing and if a person asked me that instantly I knew I could book that gig you know and I mean it maybe not instantly you know I might not book the gig that that night or something but you know anyway I just started booking gigs and I started I in a short time I was playing seven nights a week and you know uh, and then it kind of went up from there you know what's really amazing about that is um you use I mean, basic like grassroots like hey show up at the venue like just show up there because that goes so far I mean we have so many different resources now where we can email people and we can call people but when you can show up at venues and you can sit there and you can actually play for them that's a whole other selling strategy you know like they're gonna book you right then and there it's too simple and I literally have had and I still I mean I mean uh, well, a lot of the gigs that I book now, I book because somebody's hearing me play. Like, you know, if I'm playing even a wedding or something like that, and then they, the next, you know, the next bride calls me about playing their wedding or something like that. But I, um, it, yeah, I mean, I, I, and I have a buddy that's, um, that I, you know, like a lot of people ask me about it because I, in, in 2019, I played uh, 668 gigs and just now and now and I don't know what I don't know what you guys are all like what your thing is too but I got I'm gonna tell you also I am a songwriter and I have original songs and I like right now I'm getting songs produced by like I heard somebody mention you know I'm I'm getting three songs produced by a guy that his first song out of the gates was a number one song and I Another, I just had uh, sent out three songs to Nashville, and th and uh, I'm super pumped about cranking out my original music, and I'm working on that like crazy too. And I plan on yes, see, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But uh, but but at the same time, I you know, at the same time, it's nice to me to be able to. I mean, I don't you know, I don't know. I mean, uh, like like what blew my mind was I literally did make thirteen thousand dollars in May and and it was weird to me I didn't what was really weird about it to me was you know like I spend a lot of time c calling people and I you know I'm on, I'm on websites gig masters and gig salad and things like that and I'm and I and I'm following up you know people contact you they want a quote you you send a quote you know there's this negotiation and it takes time and all that stuff is schmoozing and you know but in May people were just calling me out of the woodwork and booking me on thousand dollar gigs and I mean I don't know I mean to me that's something amazing that you can make a thousand dollars for going out and playing you know playing for three or four hours I mean I I mean, I think that's awesome that you can go create music and make a thousand dollars in a day, right? Because every day that every day that I've made a thousand dollars, I go, wow, you know, that means that I have a job that I could be making three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, and I think that's decent. You know, that sounds pretty good. You know, I think the one percent of the population is four hundred thousand dollars, and I think and and. And I don't think it's, I mean, 
I think anybody can do what I do. I don't think it's like, it isn't, um, okay, here's the other thing. This is another thing that I think is super key about what I do. I play all the time. I am performing and I'm getting paid to do it. And, and for me, uh, to some degree, it's almost like I'm getting paid to practice. Like, you know, like when you, like, you know, they, the, the whole thing about, like, my voice right now, I can tell you, is a thousand times better than it was, you know, back, you know, when I first started playing gigs. But I've sang, you know, 15,000 hours. I mean, I've literally sang, you know, so I think you get, you really, you know, the, and my chops, my chops are so much better, you know, my, and, and entertaining, man, I think a big part of Elton John's thing and Billy Joel and um, Sinatra and, you know, whoever you're, 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 you know, any band that's killing it has a great show and they really, and they don't, you know, they, they get out in front of a crowd and they really entertain the crap out of the crowd. And, when you're, you know, like, so all of those basic things that are so important, I do them all the time. And I think, it, and you know, and it doesn't matter if you're playing for one person or if you're playing for, you know, 100,000 people, you still have to, you still have to engage that person to be memorable. You have to make their day, you know, you have to make, you know, so anyway, I think all those, all those simple little basic things that are so important about just for you as an artist and, and for you as a person I think all the same the same stuff that I'm talking about doesn't just apply you know to, to music it applies to having a good relationship with with anyone, anyone that you know but anyway that's a whole other thing but anyway well, you're making such a good point here because um, I think a lot of people are scared to start right because they think they're not ready and they're not prepared and and, try, first and you're not people. you're not ready yeah, and you never are. And that's the <laughs> that's thing. Right. I mean, my very first gig too. I knew one song, and and I was. Um, they didn't book me for five hours, but they booked me for three hours. And I remember thinking, how in the world am I going to get through this? But when you have a date, when you've said it, and that was the same thing. I didn't have a video. I didn't have a promo video. I didn't have any proof that I did what I did. I showed up at the venue. I knew that there was a piano there. I showed up and I played for the manager and I ended up with a gig and they were like, can you play for three hours? And I was like, yeah. And then inside I was like, oh my God, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. You know, and then I went home and I learned enough material. I ended up having to like repeat some stuff or, you know, those types of things. And yeah, you learn that little yeah. trick. Yeah, of like, yeah, and oh, we got a request. Play, yeah, and for those of you that don't play, you just find someone that does. So you can find a guitarist or you can find a piano player, you know, and that sort of thing. But the key really is to get started. And like you said, you're doing it every night. So you're learning, you're practicing. I mean, I know for me, I mean, the year that we took off for the pandemic, when I came back to play again, I was like, I couldn't believe that I couldn't remember certain songs and I was having a hard time, you know, because you're not used to doing them every day anymore and you can forget. And so it's just so important to start because once you start your voice, I mean, my vo I found out so many amazing things about my voice that I didn't know I could even do until I was singing four hours a day, eight hours a day sometimes. Dude, and after eight hours, doesn't your voice get, like, so sexy? It's, like, ridiculous. It so it's does. Like, it's, like, so cool and raspy, and it has this cool tone. And, and, it's, and it's funny to me because people go, how can you sing for eight hours? And I go... Well, you sing for eight hours. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> you know. And at the end of eight hours, man, it I can do any fucking thing in the world with my voice, you know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, when you were picking your, your uh, when you were starting out, you said when you were picking your songs, you mainly just chose, like, songs that you kind of already knew that you already at least had some sort of knowledge of. Is that kind of how you put your set list together? Yeah, um, I mean, okay. I mean, here's the, this is the craziest thing. I mean, if you, like, if you booked a gig, like, I don't know, like, the first thing I would do is just write down all of your favorite songs. Here's, the funny thing to me is, it almost doesn't, and I, and I get it, like, um, uh, you know, it's good to play, you know, whatever anybody wants, but I, it's also funny to me how just in the middle of almost any gig, if I just have this thought, you know, I just feel like playing um, High and Dry by Radiohead or something, you know, I, and it's just this random thing, or 
you know, thank you. You know, or like some random Neil Young song, and I'm kind of like, I don't even think these guys are going to know Neil Young, but I'll do the song, and it's, and I like the song. So I think if, if you like the song, then, you know, the, you're, you're, you're going to put it across well. But then, on the, but then on the flip side, I think it's, you have to be, you know, you have to be smart about it too. You have to, I mean, um, it's kind of like, and, and I think a lot of, this is a, this is a point that I've noticed a lot with um, other, other artists that, you know, like, you do need to do something that the person can connect with. So I, and I'm a hardcore like I almost have a policy that if somebody, if I get a request for a song three times, and it's not always true, but if I get a, a request for a song for three times, I probably should learn that song. And, um, you know, and it's probably you know probably probably now it's more like more like five times. And other, but there's but trust me, there are plenty of songs that I've had you know, a hundred requests for, and I still haven't learned that song, but it, so you don't need to feel like you're under that kind of pressure. But I, but I do think it's like, I do. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of the whole concept of like, I guess, bringing value. It's like, you know, you, what do, you know, it's like in a relationship, um, you know, you don't, you know, like if you're, you start a relationship and the you know you know your girlfriend or whatever or your boyfriend is like hey could you put your feet your could you put your shoes you know under the bed and you're like well i just don't do that you know i'm not into that i put my shoes you know in the uh i hang them on the on the on the doorknobs you know like cuz that's just my thing <laughs> you know and i'm kind of like that is isn't necessary. so i i am a hardcore person of like I get I I survey constantly I'm constantly taking requests and I and I even have a policy on it where I'll be like um, and I say you know I, at this point I have a huge repertoire so but I but I even do a thing and I'll even say hey even if I was just starting out I think I would always take requests anyway and I used to bring a you know I used to bring a trunk full of books with me I literally, I would not a trunk, but I'd bring like a suitcase full of like these big fat, like you know these fake books. I mean, I've got, you know, like, you know, if you want to hear a Broadway song, I've got the Broadway. I, and I had like a suitcase with all, all, all of these kind of things in there, right? And now you can, you know, now I've got this right here, and and you know, in this in this iPad, I have, a, you know, I don't know, thirty fake books and. I've, and I've got, even more important than that, I have um, Ultimate Guitar Tabs, which literally, I cannot tell, and I, you know, anyway, there, you know, there's, a, there's so many, uh, I mean, <laughs> I think too, people get too worried about how perfect it has to be, um, because, <laughs> you know, I think if you even try to play the song, and you get, and you think you sucked at it, but, but if you just start playing the song, like I've had people go, Oh, do you know, um, you know, um, I don't know, all of me? And I'm kind of like, dun, 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 just one note, dun, dun. And they're like, that's amazing. <laughs> you know what? I've had the exact same experience. Isn't it you weird? Know, what's interesting, too, is from the stage, and I do this a lot, I think everyone expects you to, or everyone puts the pressure on themselves to go, I need to know the song from start to finish. And it's got to be like, I need to be able to get an A on it from my instructor at uh, Harvard Music School or whatever. Right. And, you know, for me, a lot of times from the stage, in the microphone, I'll have a conversation with the person. I'm like, oh, yeah, where that song goes, all of me loves all of you. And I might just get through the chorus, and I might go, na, 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 all your edges. Oh yeah, imperfections. That one, you know, and everyone's like, yeah, that's, that's it. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, and it's like you didn't even sing the whole song. You didn't do the verse. You didn't even get the words of the chorus. But because you're just giving the person attention and you're talking to them and you're kind of walking through it, you're like, oh yeah, that is. A, I should learn that song, huh? You can actually have a conversation. It doesn't have to be this like epic performance. You know, it's just, just kind of, kind of singing the song. 
and they'll still take, oh my God, you did such a good job. And they'll drop a $20 bill or a $50 bill, you know, depending on the venue that you're in, and, 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 you know, or they'll drop a, a dollar. But it, I mean, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, it's amazing to me how, how much you can get away with, you know, but, you know, on the other hand, I mean, you know, the, I, and I think this is a, such an important thing as an artist that it's more, it's really about the intention that you have, your communication. It's not about whether it's perfect or not. It's whether, whether it's got heart and soul, you know, like I, I remember, um, you know, Beethoven, um, you know, talking about, you know, I, uh, I, there's plenty, I, I, you know, something, something like, you know, I played plenty of wrong notes, but I, there's not one note that I play that doesn't have passion in it. And I think that is more important. Like, even if you're like passionately doing your own version of the song that really doesn't sound anything like the song, but you're so into it, people are like, dude, this guy's amazing. <laughs> right. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, and you know what I've, I've always really learned too is it's not about the performance, you know, um, like the perfection of the song, mm -hmm. but also just about the feeling that you give to people too. So on top of like your passion, but hey, are you giving people attention? Are you talking to them? You know, and me and you have even.